Hello and welcome to the MBS show, episode number 470. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and well, we got some news for you this week. So let's hop right into it. So first up is limited edition Equestria Gold Colored Rarity Boost Shoujo Statue available for pre-order from Kotobukiya. So <coughs> Kotobukiya has popped up another in their line of limited edition figures following the Equestria Gold color scheme. Rarity is available now for pre-order with an expected release date of October 2021. If you want this one, you can grab her over in the link below. So, <clears throat> this time around we have Rarity. And Rarity does look good and it follows the Equestrial Girls schemes and whatnot. Uh, and with all limited editions, her mane or her hair is crystal-like, translucent and so on. And that's kind of the appeal. And he, here's the thing, um, I, I've been wondering, and could they have done this the other way around, where they do the Equestria Girls Bishojo figure following uh, Equestria Girls color scheme and release the human tone as their limited edition version. And in all honesty, yeah, I guess they could have done it that way because there's nothing stopping them from doing it and um some fans are fickle that way because they want to have it show accurate but i don't know um doing it this way kind of feels a, li a little bit special because you had the original release and it looks good as the way it is and uh, with a special edition like this it kind of makes people want to get it or collect them all um, if you are one of the early adopters that got the uh, normal color tone figure of it, then it's no problem and whatnot. But if, if you're a fan or if you're a huge collector, you might want to get them all. I'm not saying that you should, I'm just saying that you might. So anyway, let's move on to the next news. Next news is New Polish My Little Pony G5 book Enter entry includes a tidbit about Sunny and Hitch. <laughs> oh boy. <clears throat> We've got a bit of minor G5 movie news coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> um, wonderful world of Polish books, which apparently are the big newsmaker this year. We still aren't sure how exactly the relationship between the five ponies will play out this time around, but apparently they do have some history. Uh, okay, let's read down below. Uh, <clears throat> um, lot of text, lot of text. Going to read the one that is pretty important. They include the main character of the book. Uh, book. Okay, okay, uh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll read it here. The action of the book takes place many years after the event of the series about the adventure of twilight sparkle and her friends from ponyville by the way this is a translation a google translation from polish to english so if grammar and wording sound wrong it's because it's translated okay anyway <clears throat> there is no magic anymore in equestria and the ponies of each breed have lost their friendship superstitions and prejudice meant that represented representative of various species live in their own close communities and do not tolerate uh, strangers in this hostile world however there are exceptions they include the main character of the book fearless optimistic charming and slightly crazy sunny star scout brought up on tales of friendship and harmony that prevailed in Equestria years ago, believe that a return to this value is values is possible. Together with his childhood friend, uh, that's supposed to be together with her childhood friend, Hitch Trailblazer, and new friends, 
she embarked on an adventure journey at the end of which she will have an extraordinary, extraordinary surprise. So, <clears throat> if you want to know more, go read it there. It's all there. I mean, and yeah, <laughs> uh, take it with a grain of salt this time around. I, I read it through and it sounds pretty convincing. Um, but by, by the way that this goes, it sounds like Sunny is a guy, but we all know that she is a girl played by Vanessa Hutchins and so on. And also, what else? Um, they're childhood friends. Uh, this this is what I say about the story. Like, what happened to Equestria? Like, what what made it? What event happened to have them split into three tribes? And I'm repeating myself again. And I guess we'll just have to wait. We'll just have to wait for the movie to come out. Segue to the next news. Uh, Netflix reveals exact time for My Little Pony, A New Generation, G5 release, 12 a.m. Pacific. Okay, we've known the date for the New Generation 5 movie for quite a while now. But now we have an exact time you can all tune in to watch it on Netflix when it release, at least in the US. 12 a.m. Mountain Standard Time? Mountain? What? Okay, um, Mountain 24th, uh, September 24th will be the target. Here's hoping a good one. The fandom has done really well, surprisingly, without any action official, with, uh, without any actual official content to tie us over. Will G5 bring back the swarm? I suppose we'll find out. Updates! Updates, updates, updates! <laughs> it seems like some are getting a different time. This is what Netflix tells me. Uh, it was due to daylight savings. So 12 a.m. Pacific is correct. Okay. And yeah, um, the MST is there too. So, what this means is that 24th September, we are going to get the movie, which is all awesome. And it will be right out at 12 a.m. Uh, I don't know because over in Malaysia, it will be uh, the 25th of September. At 12, wait, uh, Pacific, Pacific is, who does the Pacific time around my crew? Man, I forgot. But um, it'll be a few hours later. Um, if you guys know what's the difference between uh, Eastern and Pacific time zone and stuff, you do the math there plus another 12 hours for Malaysian, if you want to know. So... <coughs> This is pretty exciting. This is pretty exciting because we get to we get new ponies. We get new ponies really, really soon, and I am excited for this. Uh, you, you, you guys know my concerns because um, what uh, we we have um, we we have a lot of news. We have a lot of stuff, and you know what? I'm gonna switched the camera because uh, things are kind of done. So anyway, <clears throat> getting back to my concerns for G5. Um, here, here are the things. Um, top priority is how is the movie? Is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? Uh, that one we'll have to wait and see. Uh, taper our expectations for the movie going to be mediocre or bad. And here's the thing, um, personally for me, I am going in the movie with the proper amount of expectations. I mean, this is something new. They're doing it in 3D. We got no idea if it's good or not. And we haven't really heard the character talking in their... Oh, sorry, uh, we haven't heard the actors talking in their characters' voices and so on. So 
it's going to be one of those things where the voice acting is going to make it or break it. Also personality and the show's energy. <clears throat> Personally for me, what attracted me to G4 was the show's energy, like how it um, how it portrays itself, how it takes it how it takes itself seriously and also it can make fun of itself at the same time at certain points. So with G5 here, it's kind of something interesting because it's going for sorry, but it's it's going for 3D because of how easy it is to animate and whatnot. All you need to do is basically create a model and move them in certain ways. So basically puppeting, but in 3D. So that's why that's one of the reasons why they use um, use 3D. Also, maybe children nowadays are really into the 3D animation because I do see a lot of uh, children cartoons that are in 3D now. Um, last two, a while back, me and Terra talk about uh, Dino Trucks that is in 3D, uh, Puppy Patrol, Paw, Paw, Paw Patrol that was in 3D, and what else? Uh, Lego Friends, something like that, that's in 3D too. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> With that, I can understand why they were using 3D. So, another thing that I wasn't expecting but I kind of appreciate is that they're going back, or they're not really going back, but they're using older pony lore. Even though this is G5, this is kind of a generational, <laughs> generational leap. Uh, a good example for this is... Uh, Digimon Adventure and Digimon Adventure 02. Uh, the main character Tai has grown up and is an adult, or well, at least a high school teenager. And the newer kid, oh man, I forgot his name. Um, I forgot his name. I, I don't even remember his name in Japanese. What is his name in English? Tyson, something like that, Ty whatever. So, you, you you have that kind of thing going on for it. So, to me, that's some, uh, for G5 to G4, uh, for G4 to G5, there's something similar going on with that. So, what else? Um, yeah, the voice acting. Um, the voice acting calls around a, a lot of well-known actors. And that's my only, well, for now, that's my only worry about the movie because we got no idea if they're going to reprise their role in the TV series. Because after the movie, there's going to be a TV series. Uh, assumingly, there are going to be 24, 26 episodes. There's, that's the standard one season kind of thing. So we'll have to wait and see on that, unless they're going for the 12. Then that will be very interesting. So, okay, um, I'll explain why. <clears throat> if they're going for 24 or 26 episodes, uh, the chances for the actors to reprise their roles are a bit lower because uh, doing a long recording session, just uh, doing uh, banging out episode after episode after episode is going to be costly. But if it's 12 episodes per season, just cut that in half. And yeah, it's going to cost Hasbro a bunch of money, but at least we'll still get the uh, movie voices to come back. Or they could be cheap and just replace the movie actors with our favorite local artist, Vincent Tong is one. He could play Hitch. Who knows? <laughs> so yeah, um... Those are my initial worries about the movie. Well, not really worries. I mean, it's in between um, expectations, um, worries, and whatnot. So, I, for me personally, I am excited. We are near the end of what? Uh, we're in the end of 
July. Like what? Uh, it's time of recording a month away. So that's awesome. Can't wait. Another 30 more days and we'll get ponies. Yay. So anyway, let's move on to the next topic. The next topic will be what have I been doing with my week? So as many of you may have noticed that last week we didn't have a new show. And if you notice the news, most of them are from last week. And I have a very good reason for this. <laughs> okay, a good reason is that I, we, we had three news. And I was hoping that, okay, if I take a break and move everything forward a week, we'll have at least another three more news and we have six news stacking. Unfortunately for me, there's nothing of the sort. There's nothing, no, nothing new coming through the pipeline. So, kind of a bummer. Technically, this should have come out last week and this week should be a break week. But, well, it can be helped. It can be helped. At least there's an episode this week if you're a fan of the new show and my opinions. Thank you. So, other than that, um, what have I been doing in my week? Um, <clears throat> I, I'm, oh yeah, I, I played a game. Uh, I, I played the game Street of Rage 4. And the uh, new DLC came out. And that really pulled me in into playing a lot of it. So if you guys got no idea what Street of Rage is, uh, it is a side-scroller 2D beat-em-up created by Sega or produced by Sega. It was, it was a Sega game. So if you are a Genesis boy or a Mega Drive boy, uh, you would have played it because it was one of the quintessential Sega games to play and own. So with it coming out on almost everywhere, I bought my own PC and played it and it was a lot of fun like just going through trying to master movements and so on I mean it was fun it was a lot of fun <clears throat> what else can I say um, other than playing Street of Rage I haven't really been doing much I think I've seen a bit of anime <sighs> um one anime I'm watching now and almost finished is called Kiss Kiss Him Not Me. And the anime, I'll just tell you guys the synopsis because it's some, <laughs> it's a show that is, that you have to kind of watch. And here's the thing, um, the show stars a girl, I forgot the name, that's terrible of me, maybe K something, I really don't care. So anyway, um, the character was fat, P-H-A-T, fat. Suddenly, um, but she's, she's nice, kind-hearted and whatnot. But, you know, because fat girls aren't attractive, people don't treat her with respect. One day, uh, her favorite... No, uh, one day, suddenly when she, after a week, she comes back to school, she is thin and beautiful. Oh my! Like, oh, what happened? And suddenly all the boys, and in this scenario, all four boys, are attracted to her and try to get it on with her. Or at least get a date. And somehow, uh, they all became good friends and so on. Hijinks ensue. It is one of those animes that, for me, when I first saw it, it was really hard to get in. I, I, I had trouble going into it. But after a while, it was really entertaining. So what I recommend to you guys to go watch it. By the way, this anime came out really, really wild back, like 2019. Or was it 18? It, it was really long. So anyway, um, would I recommend it? Oh man, this is a hard sell. I got no idea. Like, for me personally, I wouldn't. But it is fun. So, I'll say this. If you like 
um, hijink, slice of life kind of show, give it a shot. But if you don't like those genres, uh, give it a pass. And what else? What else did I do? Mm. Mm, I'm trying to... Well, I, I, obviously we all watch Loki, so that's that. Um, other than that, I, I don't remember. I should really write this down. But anywho, uh, talking about writing down, let's end the show. So, if you guys have any concerns, <laughs> if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at themgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. And also, please subscribe and raise on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on Pernivlive.com. Links are in the show notes. Uh, also, do subscribe and read us on iTunes and Stitcher Radio for the review and discussion podcast. Over there, you'll catch me, Totera, reviewing Pony A cartoon, well, episodes, <laughs> episodes, comic books, specials, and also movies. And we like to do other things than ponies, and those are... Um, I'm trying to think, give me a second. <laughs> uh, cartoons, animes, comic books, mangas, and games, and so on. So, yeah, we, we do like a lot of other things. Yes. So, anyway, uh, please do subscribe to us there and give us a like. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash mbs show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, Master of Lag, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo, and I'll catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya!